This is the plaintiff, Andrew Pitts. He says he came out of his apartment one day and his car was gone. He had no idea where it was for eight days until the defendant called to tell him they towed it because he was blocking the guy's driveway. When he went to retrieve the car, he was charged for the tow and storage for eight days. Not only that, his car was badly damaged. The intimidating defendant kicked him off his lot, refuses to pay him for the damages he caused. And that's why he's here today suing for the $2,000 he's now out. This is the defendant, Mo. He says he towed the plaintiff's car at the request of a property owner whose driveway was blocked. He informed the cops, got a signature, and towed the car to his yard. He also marked all the damages on the thing prior to the tow. The guy got his car, paid the fee, and drove off on his merry way without a complaint. Until now. Ha, ha, ha. He's accused of a low blow tow. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says his car was missing for eight days until the defendant fessed up, said he towed it. But the defendant says the plaintiff had violated the law, so them's the consequences. It's the case of going toe to toe. Andrew Pitts. Yes, ma'am. You are suing First Star Towing Incorporated, represented here as you'd like to be referred to only as Mo. Yes. For $2,000 that you say they owe you as a result of a tow that you say they shouldn't have done and damages they did to your car. Oh, and pain and suffering. Yes, okay, and tell me what happened. <laughs> Your Honor, thank you very much for inviting me here to People's Court. Uh, Judge Koch's picture is outside the door. Uh -huh. And I wanted to mention Judge Koch because many years ago, he spoke about a bad <clears throat> apple in the barrel type theory in the towing industry. And I'm here today to present to you uh, a bad apple. Okay. Uh, all tow companies are not bad. I, uh, so what happened here? I parked my 2005 Kia on the 9th of April. Uh -huh. I returned on the 10th and it was gone. Okay, where did I, you park it? Tree, uh, Teller Avenue. But is it um, a residential area? Yes, ma'am. And you live in that area? Yes, ma'am. All right, so you parked it on the street? Yes, ma'am. All right. And uh, why did you tow that car? It was blocking the driveway. Blocking somebody's driveway? Yes. Apparently you got a call from the homeowner yes. saying this car is blocking my driveway. Correct. All right, do you ever photograph cars before you tow them? Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Don't you have you a don't. cell phone with it that takes pictures? You think that's dark. only for nasty things? Like, yeah. why? It takes, it's so easy. Like, why you know wouldn't you guys got, do it's that? It's already summons, so we don't just take pictures. There was a we ticket on it? Yes. Did you get a summons for parking, blocking somebody's I, driveway? You have to look at this ticket, Your Honor. Okay, so the police also agreed you were blocking no, a driveway. No, the ticket, the ticket came from him, and it's blank. And this is what okay, he had. Okay, hand over me. what you're talking about. You're saying there was a summons by the city, yes. right? Yeah, it's the city of New York. Why do you say it came from him? It was on my windshield. Well, I think it got rained not... out. Yes. <laughs> Did it get rained out? Yes. Well, this is obviously from the New York City Department of Finance. I went down to the uh, motor vehicle and, and? Uh, to check on it. The end? I didn't find out very much about it. Did you go online and see whether you had a parking ticket? No, I did not. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to find out if you had a parking ticket. That'll okay. be easy. All right. All right. And if you didn't pay it, you may have an issue with them that you got to resolve. All right. So you tow the car. Yes. And what is your procedure after you tow the car? Go to the precinct, the local precinct in the area, and um, submit them a receipt and get a signature. Let me see the signature addition. you got from the police department showing them that you towed the car. And the reason why you do that is because that's the law. You've got Correct. to let the police officer in the precinct where you towed the car know that Correct. you have the car because the first thing somebody's going to do is say, hey, somebody stole my car. Yes. And then the police can inform them, nope, you got towed, and here's where you need to go to get it. Correct. Right? All right. So where's the police officer's signature? On the right bottom. This scribble? Yes. Who is the police officer that signed it? Uh, so the sergeant. Is that a badge number, supposedly? Correct. What's the badge number? You tell me. What does that scribble say? Stay where you are. He's bringing it to you. You tell me what that scribble says. 22. You sure? From what I could see, yes. <laughs> OK. I suggest to you that if the point is to have proof that you submitted it to the police department, that there'd be something a little bit better than that. OK. OK? All right, so then, Mr. Pitts, you come out to the car that morning. It's not there, and what do you do? I had a friend drive me to the pound. They did not have it. And then? Um, I took to the sheriff, the marshal, the police, nothing. So um, I called the police to say it was stolen since no one could find it. They came the next day. 
They picked me up. We went back to the scene, and uh, they took me to the precinct. We filled out an incident report, and uh, I got in touch with GEICO to let them know that my car was missing and that no one had it. And GEICO uh, got to work on it, too. So I had two alarms out on the car. Still, when you say two alarms, you mean... I mean, the police is looking for it. Right. Now, and Geico's Geico. looking for it. Right. Because they had to give me a new car if they couldn't find it. And it's like it just disappeared off the street. Right. And uh, a couple of days later, he surfaced. How did he surface? He called me about 9.30 one evening saying, I have your car. What happened? Well, I didn't hear from anybody because usually they come within a day or two because it takes so long for the precinct to give them the information. So Who gives I, them the information? The police uh, station. Right, well, the no, desk. they give him the information if he calls, but don't, aren't you required to send out a notice? If you have information on the owner. They Why don't didn't give you that. have information on the owner? Because they don't give it to you right away. Why when not? When you go to prison, they don't give you that information. Okay, I'm sorry, but then what do you do when you tow cars? You just wait for somebody to reach you? You don't make an effort to notify Well, that's the... why we notify the police department, because the first thing they're going to do is not call what the police department. What kind of tags did he have on the car? Georgia plates. Did you have Georgia plates on your car? Yes, ma'am. In the Bronx? Well, I live in Georgia, too. Okay. I'm like a dual citizen. <laughs> dual I live citizen. In both states. Not because the insurance is way cheaper in well, Georgia, well, right? Okay, so so then what happens? How do you find him? So I, I go to the police station. I ask this officer, is there a police um, report on this vehicle? If it's stolen or can I get any information on the owner? Because nobody came to redeem the vehicle yet. So he says, you know what, the vehicle's stolen. So I said, it's not stolen. It was towed for blocking the driveway. So he did the incident report after. The fact that I towed the car. Yes, I understand, which okay. is why I'm having trouble understanding. I'm going to contact the precinct, and I'm going to find out if this is legit, because okay. I'm worried that you didn't go by and let them know, because it didn't work as though you had gone by and let them know, which means either you messed up and never went by and are forging this, or they screwed up, one or the other. But in any event, so when you call him, he comes down, and you charge him $201. How much of that is tow? How much of that is storage? The tow is 125. The first three days are included in the 125, and it's 15 miles after the fourth day of storage. Okay. And now you go to and you pay the 201 dollars, and much to your dismay, your car has damages. Yes, ma'am. I have and pictures. And where are the damages? I have pictures. Tell me when you went to the yard what you found. I went to the yard, and he was very truculent about the entire situation. He left us behind the fence with his bulldog and two of his henchmen with him. The way he had my car stored was behind two large tow vehicles and a third one on the side. You could not see my car from the street. And I asked him, why did he keep my car so long? Why didn't he get in touch with me? He had no way of doing that. He didn't know who I was. He said the car was $190. I asked for a receipt. He was resistant to give me a receipt. She can explain better than I can because she actually handed him the cash and argued with him to get a receipt. You can look at the receipt that he gave me on. It says that he paid the money, not us. Why don't there you give receipts? I give receipts. Why does it say Mo paid cash? Because she asked me to put on the bottom paid cash, such and such, and I signed my name on it. Yeah, but it says Mo paid cash. Right. What okay. did you mean right. to say and paid cash? This, right. and sincerely that's, Mo? that's a problem, you know, okay. you want me to change, I could change it. Okay. Right. It, wasn't an, it wasn't an issue. All right, so what happened with the damage to this car? They, at no point did he ever say anything about the damage to the car. They didn't contact me about the damage to the car. They didn't say anything at all about the damage to the car. Did you, did you talk to him about the damage to the car? You noticed that after I you drove I noticed the off. damage on the driver's side, my back door, when, did you when I was it? there. And did you but say something to him? when I got back home, no, I didn't say anything because of the way he was acting. Okay. He was just so, I mean, he was like a bully. He had us behind a fence. He had his bulldog, got two of his people oh, in yeah. reach. Oh, yeah, the tow guys are really tough when yeah, they're there. Yeah, I mean, they talk to you like... <laughs> when they're here, it's different. <laughs> yeah, right. And I told her, I said, just get You're a You're the receipt. only people that are hated more than lawyers. Yes. <laughs> and I say that as a lawyer. <laughs> I asked her just get a receipt to get his name on it. Where's the tow receipt, please? I just give it to you. Oh, is this the tow receipt? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Right. So then what happens? Um, I took pictures and then I went to the court and filed the charges. Where is this damage? Uh, the right side, right fender, and the left door uh, on my driver's side behind me. How do I know that it wasn't damaged beforehand or that it wasn't damaged no. that night? 
No, well, I think she can contest in my car was in good shape. A test. Come on up. If she's going to contest it, you don't want to call her as a witness, because that means she's going to fight it. OK, tell me about the condition of the car. Yes, uh, Your Honor, um, when we went back to, when we went to the place to pick up the car from yeah. the towing company, at the beginning when we got there, I was trying to video, like, the, the sign of the place. So I didn't get to do that because he had a big, giant dog back there. So I was scared to, so I put the camera away. So we couldn't get What do you want her to testify to? That my car was in better shape than it's in now. It didn't okay. look like that. Th these damages that are here, were these on his car the last time you saw his car earlier that day? No, ma'am. Okay. I know, I know so how those pictures look. You need to see him. We can look. bring him back. Now, I notice that it's marked here with scratches, uh, dents and scratches yes. on the car. Correct. Okay. And then your side always says this. Look, Judge, we noted the dents and scratches before the tow. Correct. Right. Your side always says that. And my brain always says, maybe you did and maybe you didn't, because I don't know when you filled this document out. Having said that, $201, you want your towing and storage fees back. But the homeowner called him to tow you because you were blocking her driveway. And it looks like the police agreed because you have a, a, a ticket on your car. So why would you, you not have to pay for a tow? Well, he never gave me a chance to redeem my car. Why would OK, he... that's a different issue. The storage, he has a job to do. And the job that he has to do is he's supposed to go to the precinct and let them know I've towed this car. I'm going to try to find out if this is legit. Okay. If this is something he scribbled because he forgot to do it or whatever else, or he's trying to drum up storage fees, you're not going to pay storage fees. You're still going to pay the tow, but you're not going to pay storage fees. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Courts in recess a moment. Let me All see right. what I can find out on my own. So do tow truck operators have a bad reputation, you know, about being unethical and whatnot, or is it, is it legit? It's legit. Really? It really is. As a group? Well, you kind of start there first and then qualify the individual. You so know? you have, they have to prove they're not unethical. Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. You're young, but what do you think? Um, some people. See, I think that's the point. Some people are ethical and some people aren't. Are they all unethical as a group? I mean, do you, I know people feel that way. I don't think they're all unethical, but it depends what city you're in, too. Okay, more ethical. Lawyers or tow truck operators? Yeah, don't answer. <laughs> Going inside the courtroom. Okay. So I have a few questions. Number one, to you, Mo, tell me again what you do when you tow a car. Make sure it has a parking ticket on it first. Then you The police the didn't call you to tow this. No. The homeowner did? The homeowner did. Yes. Gave her the tow receipt. She filled it out, signed it. So this is her handwriting? Yes. Gave her a copy of it. I then how do you it. notify the police? Go to the precinct with the car. Is that what you do at every tow? Yes. We called the, the precinct and they said that you're supposed to call 311 and that they have a database and that that's how it's done. Do you ever call 311 no. or no? No. Ever? Never. And you've been in business how long? 11 years. But this is like garbage, you know? You know, when you, if, you, if that really happened and you see them sign like that, you need to have them say, you need to say what's your name and what number is that? You gotta do something. You know, this is not proof you told the precinct. I'm gonna return this guy's storage fees, that part of it, because I just, I have an uncomfortable feeling, I don't know why. That's $76, which is going his way. But let's talk about something else. When I ask you the question, didn't you get a ticket, your answer to me was, this is just something he placed there, yes. right? Look, it's blank, right. right? How would he get a New York City ticket in his hands? I don't know, that's what he gave me. Who gave you? He did, he left it was on, on your windshield, car. right? You don't know anything about this? No, it was on the- Except for that you paid it. I haven't paid it yet. Well. According to New York City, you paid it. No, ma'am. Well, I'm just going to give you a list of all your little tickets. I haven't. OK? And this is all washed out, but this pre-printed number is here. And when I run this pre-printed number, it gives me your whole record. OK? No parking, street cleaning, no parking, street cleaning, no parking, daytime limits, failure to display muni meter receipt. No, you have like a parking <laughs> crack habit. I don't know what you're doing here. Fire hydrant, no parking, street cleaning, obstruction of driveway, pedestrian ramp, and that's, that's this ticket. And okay. it's been paid. Well, I didn't pay it. You gave me this, this is your evidence. That's where I found it. Don't you read well, what you hand me? Yeah. Right there on the bottom, it says you paid this ticket. But I Listen, how do I know the homeowner didn't back out, hit your car? By the way, there's also a key mark a key, somebody took a key and scratched your car. 
Right? You see that? Is that a key mark? Yes. Yeah. So how do I know the homeowner didn't do that stuff to you or take a garbage can and whack you or something before? Uh, I, don't, I don't know how this happened. See, that's the problem is I can't trust you either. I don't trust you. I don't trust you either. I don't trust anybody. Well, you know, and the bottom line is you've got the burden of proving it to me when you come into my courtroom. I'm going to order you to return the $76 because I'm just, you know, I've got a conflict between the police and you about what the right procedure is, and that much of it is storage. Other than that, I'm not going to order any other money paid to you because you don't have proof that he damaged it, and there's a couple of holes in your story that make me uncomfortable. That's my verdict. Good luck, folks. So his story just didn't hang together. It was all shredded and in tatters, and it just didn't hang together enough for you to prove your case. Yeah, um, a lot of things I didn't get a chance to say that I wanted to say. What's with all the parking tickets? Oh, that's over a three-year period. Oh, fine. That didn't just happen. Oh, then it's fine now. <laughs> all right, all right, head right around the corner this Thank way you. here. And, all right, here comes Mo. Thank you. So what's your feeling on this outcome here? It was okay. Yeah. Not upset about it. And just I don't think he should have got that money back for the storage. Ooh, you're tough. The judge didn't yeah. trust you either. Did you no. ever say that? No, I've heard it before. Yeah, no one trusts the toe no, guys. No, nobody does. <laughs> Harvey? Okay, just so you know, there is a difference between the right to tow a car, which uh, the defendant had the right to do, and charging a storage fee when the car was hidden from the plaintiff where the tow or the storage fee just kind of built up and built up and built up.